Uh, well, uh, nearly 50 reported puppy, puppy scams have, help, have happened in Metro Detroit over the past six months, costing people upwards of $67,000 uh, in total. And joining us now to talk about uh, how those scams often go down and ways that you can avoid them, we're joined by Holly Wiki, who was a recent victim of a puppy scam, as well as Melanie Dukanal, the president and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau. Uh, ladies, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you. having you on. So uh, let's start with you, Holly. Tell us about your story. As you recently fell victim uh, to a puppy scam, what happened to you and, and uh, in, in this situation that ultimately led to you being scammed? About September, my husband and I decided to start looking around for uh, breeders. We went through AKC websites. Um, found a list of questions to actually ask breeders to make sure that we were dealing with a good breeder and not a puppy mill, which was a concern of ours. Uh, the scams were not yet on our radar. Uh, we did uh, interview a couple of them. Uh, the one that we chose was uh, a very elaborate system. They had forms to fill out. They had answers to all of the questions. The AKC on their website recommends that you speak to them personally so that you can ask them questions directly and they don't have the time to come up with a canned response so that they can get that out quickly. They answered all of them appropriately. They sent videos with music in the background and pictures and photos, email, text, called. It was very, very well done. And so, Melanie, how common are these scams uh, during the holiday season especially, but overall also? Well, I'll give you a better st statistic. So just in the last three months, out of all the money that our local communities have lost to online scams, and this puppy scam is an online scam, 54% are related to puppy scams alone. Oh. And when you're looking at the last three months, we have just in our little microcosm of the world lost over $15,818 with another 2000 that was attempted, but the customer realized that this is going the wrong direction. So, you know, when you're looking at that's only 17 reported scams, that's a lot of money per loss when you're talking about scams. If you think about the holidays, the holidays are when everybody really wants to have that cool gift and the kids have been tugging on your on your shirt going, Dad, I want a, I want a puppy, I want a puppy, and you want to make them happy. And going out during times of COVID can kind of scare you. So this seems like the best way to do it. And in Holly's situation, she did all the right things. She just found a really good scam artist. We're joined by Melanie Dukano, president and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau, and Holly Katwicki, victim of a of a recent puppy scam uh, as well. And so, Holly, for you, um, when when did that realization come to you? When did that bell ring off that you had been scammed or you were being scammed? And what were your initial reaction or steps that you took afterwards to try to either counteract that issue or, at the very least, report it and help other people avoid those scams? We were asked to make a deposit using Zelle. I had never used it before. They gave me some information. They sent me a form on how to set it up through the bank, so I did. And they asked me in the memo section to put the names of the puppies that I was interested in purchasing, and I did. They also wanted a little bit extra money, and I couldn't, I hit a, a daily limit on Zelle. So I was gonna send the money through another bank account using Zelle again. And I made the mistake of, happy mistake, of putting the word puppy because I didn't feel like typing in the names. And the bank I was dealing with caught the scam, called me right away, stopped the transaction. Uh, I then spent quite a bit of time on the phone with their department, uh, called the local police department here in White Lake, uh, made a report there, uh, filed a report online with the Better Business Bureau, and um, also contacted local television station where they ran an expose on that, that um, trying to get the information out so it doesn't happen to others. 
We're joined by Holly Cut Wiki, victim of a recent puppy scam, as well as Melanie Dukanel, who's the president and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau. And so, Melanie, what are some of those red flags that uh, potential consumers who are looking for a puppy from a breeder or from a shelter that they find or, or some other source, what are some of those red flags that they should be looking out for during the process of exploring, adopting a puppy or another animal uh, or, or in the process of making that purchase? One of the interesting things is that they use stock photography. So if you were to take the picture of the puppy that you really have fallen in love with and put it into Google and see if Google images can pop it up again in a different website, you'd be quite surprised how often that happens. So that's one red flag. The other one is if they're really trying to get you to use a different payment method. We've heard gift cards being used, like an Apple card. We've heard of Zelle and um, Venmo and those kind of things. We've even heard of Bitcoin being used to acquire dogs. Those are all systems in which you cannot track the money once it's gone. You can't reverse the charge. So that's another red flag. If they're able to take your credit card, you have some safety in it, but it's still a hassle, so recognize that. The other thing is, is that if you cannot see the dog, touch the dog, interact with the dog, it's not a good idea to even move forward with it. And sometimes the breeder is out of state, so it's in inconvenient to get there. So you wanna make sure that you reserve some time, jump in your car, or if it's that far away, jump on a plane and go interact with the dog. There are very legitimate breeders across the country and AKC's website has some wonderful tips on how to identify a good breeder. The difficulty is, is that we're finding scammers are so good at this and Holly is, is sadly one of, the, one of their victims, but they will look at your search on the internet of what kind of dogs you're looking for, and then they'll start populating with their fake websites on what the breed is, and there goes your too good to be true opportunity. We're joined by Melanie Ducanel, President and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau. Learn more information at easternmichiganbbb.org or by going to bbb.org. We're also joined by Holly Kotwicki, a victim of a puppy scam recently uh, in our local area. And so, uh, Melanie, in process, what actions can be taken? If someone's going through the process, something seems too good to be true, something seems off, they realize one of those red flags, whether it be doing a reverse uh, image search by right clicking right. on a photo and just clicking the search Google for an Im image function that's often available in browsers or um, you know, the weird payment methods, the odd payment methods that are being asked. If they're, they're in that point in the process and they realize they might be being scammed, what actions can they take and should they be taking to A, avoid being scammed, but also to report this potential scam for investigation? Sure. Well, Holly did it absolutely to the book. She notified law enforcement. She contacted us here at the BBB. She worked with her bank to say, can we stop the, the interaction, the cost that's gonna go down with this? The sad thing is, is that when you use those third party unusual payment programs, the likelihood of getting your money back is slim to none. So again, if the breeder is not communicating, if the breeder is unwilling for you to come see the animal, those are huge red flags, so stop, cease and desist, and then try to recapture your money as fast as you can. We're joined by Holly Cut Wiki, victim of a puppy scam, as well as Melanie Ducanel, president and CEO. And so, Holly, in terms of what you have done uh, since you and your husband came to the realization that you had been scammed while looking for a puppy, uh, have you been able to successfully recover the, the funds that you had lost, or have you been able to get any sort of word moving forward in your case of maybe catching these people that had scammed you or moving along in that process? No. Um... There is nothing, as Melanie said, that they can do. I did also report it to the fraud department at Zell. They'll keep an eye out, and they are pretty good at trying to catch it when they can, right. but they don't guarantee anything, and there's no refund of the money. So the money that was lost was lost. I, I hope at some point it, it goes to feed somebody who needed it. If they're stealing <laughs> it, I can't do anything but that. 
Um, but we did manage to find um, on the western part of Michigan uh, a very wonderful breeder, and I'm the proud mom of two little Chihuahua girls. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it does work out. And, and there were some very nice emails that I received from, from the broadcast about people that were in the area that had similar things. We actually let the scam go beyond where we knew we were being scammed to see what the next steps would be so that we could properly report them. Um, the second half of pieing the puppy and the second scam is actually the shipment of it. They charge a rental fee, which is an exorbitant amount of money that they place on your credit card and will refund after taking a small fee. So what you might lose in the $1,000 puppy that you purchased, the shipping of that puppy is $150 rental to which they take a $3,500 deposit on your credit card. So now they have your address, your phone number, a picture of you, your driver's license to prove where you live, and a copy of your credit card. The second half of that scam is actually far more beneficial to them than the first half. Wow. So yeah, it, thanks for taking those steps and uh, for letting people know that that's a common next step in that process so that if they haven't recognized at the point that you recognize you've been scammed, that at that point, they really start asking questions. And Melanie, uh, you had something to say as well. So really where Holly is going with it is that it becomes a personal private information scam where they take now your profile and leverage to their benefit. So they're going to now open credit in your name and potentially damage your credit rating. So when you're looking at what you're sharing with an online puppy um, organization or any online shopping, you have to be very, very careful on what you're doing with it. So in this case in, that Holly had gone through, you also are best to post something on your credit report that this happened and all three of your credit reports. And in my two cents, I would actually lock down my personal credit reports so nobody could open credit in my name after an event like this. And usually when you do that too, uh, with one credit bureau, they will communicate with the other credit bureaus that that's been done, is that correct? I'm not 100% certain on that, to be honest with you. So I would just, you know, me being extra special careful, I would contact all three. Yeah, better to contact all three and, and already have uh, that be done after contacting one and make sure it's done, then it's not contact at all and maybe they're able to slip through the cracks with your information exactly. on one credit report versus the other. We're joined by Melanie Ducano, President and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau and Holly Kotwicki, a recent victim of a puppy scam with us on the Megacast. And so, uh, Melanie, in terms of these scammers, are they more commonly posing uh, from what the Better Business Bureau knows of, about these specific scams, are they more commonly posing as breeders or or as shelters? And if they're and if it's one versus the other, you mentioned some of the steps people can, you know, some of the red flags. But what are some of the steps people can take to verify that these are accredited shelters, at least in that case? And can they do that with breeders as well? So accredited shelters generally not because they're charities, they're usually nonprofits. So, um, but from the perspective of breeders, you can go to the akc.com or .org organization and verify that they're a registered breeder. And the reason that breeders are more prevalent than shelters is that shelters usually provide dogs at a at less costly price. Breeders are going to ask for 800, 1,000. We've seen some particular breeds that are going for five and $7,000. So when you're looking at it from that perspective, that's where the money lays. And you know, when Holly was talking about the shipping, they're going to take a $3,500 hold of your credit card. You're not going to get that back. Yes, they say it's only going to be $150 at the end of the day, but they're looking for as much money as they can get out of you. So they're going to take that $3,500 hold and never release it. We're joined by Melanie Ducano, President and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau, and Holly Katwicki, victim of a recent puppy scam. So, Melanie, uh, during the holiday season, you mentioned that that's an easier time for a lot of these scammers to get through uh, to people that are looking to add a puppy or looking to add another animal to their uh, to their home, uh, and, and um, you know, run one of these scams. Maybe run it a lot quicker 
than they would in, in other cases. What are some other, as we head into this holiday, holiday season, common scams we see during the holiday season, but also uh, different or more common scams that we're seeing as we approach this particular holiday season in 2021? Well, as we recognized last year, online shopping was the best thing you could do because you never had to go out in the cold. You didn't have to fight with the crowds. Granted, there were no crowds, but um, we have gotten really comfortable in the whole online shopping. In fact, it's our highest, fastest growing segment of scams. So the mirroring of such as target.com it looks like target but it, in instead of .com it's cpm as the trailer so you have to make sure that the website is actually the website you want you have to punch in the address yourself not click on some random link um, the other thing is is that you have to do your research now here's as i mentioned earlier some of uh, the scammers are trolling us and watching what we're looking to buy disconnect for a good period of time, probably at least a day, and then go back and do your research on which retailers you wanna work with. Because you wanna disconnect your trolling so they don't insert themselves in the middle. In fact, 74% of the online victims, uh, online shopping victims were unresearched, just buy it quick, you know, look at that right rail in Facebook and just, hey, that looks great, it's a great price, click it, and they don't even get the product. They lose the money, they don't get the product, they don't even get bad product, they get no product. So you have to take your time and make sure that you're in the driver's seat. We're joined by Melanie Ducanel, president and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau and Holly Cott Wiki, a victim of a recent puppy scam. Uh, joining us on the Megacast, learn more information, of course, uh, about uh, about different scams and different things to be w looking out for from the uh, Michigan Better Business Bureau by visiting easternmichiganbbb.org or from the National Better Business Bureau at bbb.org. And in terms of those uh, breeders uh, and, and trying to find um, accredited breeders, uh, that website is akc.com. That is akc. Dot com. And so, uh, Melanie, Holly, just a few more minutes with both of you. I'll start with you, Melanie. Anything else at this time uh, that people should be aware of in terms of potential scams or schemes that they may fall victim to uh, this holiday season or even outside of the context of the holidays or anything else that we haven't spoken about today? Sure. Let's talk about charity giving. It's the yeah. time that a lot of people give, um, give their money, donate their money. Make sure that the organization that you want to give to, make a list ahead of time and know exactly how much you want to budget to give away. And then you initiate it. Don't wait for people to call you because you cannot verify a phone call or a text message that it's the American Cancer Society or Susan G. Komen. If you're driving the donation, you know that it will go there. So you have to be ready and able to do that. And then, when you're looking at which charity to donate to, some folks get their heads wrapped around, well, only so much of my dollars are going to the actual program. You can find that out in their annual reports. So look for that and make sure that you recognize that payroll also is part of program expense because you can't generally get a program out there unless a human is actually delivering the program. And then Holly, uh, anything else for us today? Anything else you'd like to say or something we didn't discuss about um, puppy scams or your story that you'd like to, to speak about today? One of the reasons that we looked for a smaller breeder was we need to support the smaller breeders to prevent the puppy mills mm -hmm. and, and to take a look at local shelters and for people to be more informed about what's going on and not necessarily be shied away from my story, but to be more cautious and to still go ahead and support those small breeders and businesses and utilize the tools, the AKC. And sometimes when you do it all right, you still lose a little bit of money. <laughs> And, and that's really sad. And But I will say again, Holly did all the right things ahead of time. It's just, they are really, really sophisticated these days. And they recognize that it's easier to do this than sometimes going out on the street and defrauding somebody. Again, we've been joined by Melanie Ducanel, the president and CEO of the Michigan Better Business Bureau, as well as Holly Cotwicky, who recently fell victim uh, to a puppy scam. Again, uh, that 
the uh, for more information on accredited breeders to, and to cross reference the information you have from a breeder you may be dis you know, discussing uh, purchasing a puppy from that you can go to akc.com uh, and go to a recognized and trusted expert in breed health and training information for dogs the American Kennel Club uh, that that is uh, was suggested by Melanie and by Holly today uh, ladies thank you both for joining us thank, thank you. you for having me